case because the prosecution can challenge this verdict in a higher court. You get it, Lamai there. Now, American scientists have announced that a surrogate dog has given birth to the world's first test tube puppies. The seven puppies were born in July. They are so cute. The sperm and eggs of Beagle, Labrador and Cocker Spaniels were fertilized in vitro and transferred into the host mother. Scientists have tried since the 1970s to carry out IVF reproduction in dogs, but found the procedure far more difficult than in humans. Researchers at Cornell University and the Smithsonian Institute in the US who are behind the study hope this technique could be used to help breed endangered species. Well, we've been now Helen Briggs, our science reporter. Why has it been so hard to do, Helen, before now? It is surprising, isn't it? Because in 1978, we had the first human test tube baby, and since then, about five million human test tube babies around the world dogs they started trying in the 70s um, but it's taken them 30 years and now they're very very cute they do make you smile but there is a serious bit of science here so much so that they've kept them secret for a little while so they can actually publish their results to scientists and get a credibility from the scientific community what's the most significant thing now in terms of the potential of the science and the research I think the first thing they'll do is maybe looking at lo using this in endangered species so if you've got an endangered dog that's very precious you could take its sperm you could take its eggs you could freeze those but if you don't have IVF then you can't actually make an embryo that could then be put into a, a surrogate dog say in a zoo um, to make more of these dogs in fact possibly in the future even maybe reintroduce them into the wild the long-term medical applications for dogs um, fixing um, faulty genes in dogs and possibly also in human medicine are there many Gene, genetic disorders that dogs can have. Are, are they like humans in that way? Well, surprisingly, in some ways they're not like humans, they, which is why it took so long to actually perfect this IVF in dogs, but in certain illnesses they're very like us. So it's about 300 diseases that are quite similar in humans and dogs. So you could use them as a model. Um, for example, cancer, dogs do get cancer, and because they live alongside us in our homes, they're exposed to the same sort of environmental influences. So at some point in the future, um, this work might become very important in looking at human diseases like cancer. Briefly on that, Helen, you know, you mentioned that they've kept this secret and under wraps for a bit, and now we've got these great pictures and everyone's very excited, but how long until, you know, the work that is being done there can be used more broadly? Well, I've looked, talked to people around um, the world on this. Other scientists actually have been waiting for this, so they now will take this work and use it for all sorts of different developments, um, as I say, for, for possibly um, doing work on um, improving the health of dogs and, in the long term, improving the health of humans. Thank you, Helen. We've taken the opportunity to run the pictures as much as possible because they do bring, as you said, a smile to the face, those puppies. Do stay with us. Plenty more to come in the next edition of GMT. Hello there. Big weather contrasts at the moment across Europe. High pressure in charge to the south.